more sleep innovation from Aura. That's our text to nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from Aura is Science Communications Lead Carolyn Kreider. Hi, Carolyn. Hey, how's it going? Terrific. Well, Aura is unveiling just in time for World Sleep Week. What am I doing awake? Some <laughs> updates to help users get a better night's sleep. Give us the overview here. Yes, we are. Sleep Week. We're trying to make Sleep Week a thing. So getting everybody to celebrate. Um, if you're participating on any of our social channels, we had a launch week video saying, hey, stop by all week long. We're going to be sharing education, tips, tricks, you know, different perspectives, how to use current features that the Aura Ring already has. And then we're releasing a few new features. So if you want, I can give you a rundown of some of the things that we're launching. Absolutely. We want to hear about them. Awesome. Um, so our big cornerstone feature for this week is a feature that's called Body Clock. Um, so first things first, Fred, are you an early bird or a night owl? Early. I've worked <laughs> in radio for many years. Awesome. Then you're used to getting up at some hours that I think would make other people's eyes kind of pop. Um, so we have a feature that's called Body Clock. And the way that it works is it takes months and months of your data and it analyzes for your body personally, on a deep, deep, deep level, when does your body naturally do best being awake and being asleep? And then it shows you what your personal chronotype is. And what your chronotype is, is it's almost like the difference between getting a daily horoscope and what your overall sign is. Uh, maybe you're a Libra and then you get daily advice on what you could do with it. The body clock feature, what it will do is tell you what your chronotype is, like a Libra, Aries, Pisces, down to the exact hours that your body performs best. So, Fred, you might be 5 a.m. I might be 6 a.m. or 7. And there's a very subtle difference. So it breaks it into six different groups that you fall into. So that you can look at, hey, here's the exact time my body performs best when I should be waking up and best when I naturally fall asleep. And then it shows you every single day your personal body clock. So how did your last night's sleep and daytime either align or misalign with your body's natural rhythm? So the way people are using that is, especially with work from home culture, maybe you figure out that you are a night owl. And maybe you work with your team and you're able to change your hours so that you're sleeping in just a little bit more. And the sleep that you do get because you're more in alignment with your body's natural rhythm means it is that much more restorative and it's that much easier for you to wake up in the morning. So we have a lot of people who are going to be using this feature and maybe finding that they are waking up before their alarm even. Is this going to be like part of the readiness score that uh, that Aura is well known for? That's a good question. It's actually on the sleep um, tab. So within the app, we have our readiness, our sleep, and our activity. So if you're on the sleep tab, you get a lot of different information. You get an overarching sleep score from zero to 100. So kind of your quick glance, how are you doing? Are you low? Are you high for the quality of your sleep? And then as you scroll down, you get richer insights. So you have all of your sleep contributors, which are the different things that make up your sleep score. So is it deep sleep? Is it REM? How are you doing on the amount of time that you're asleep? versus just lying in bed. Um, so a lot of rich elements. And then as you scroll down past your contributors, you can see a lot of different graphs and the body clock graph and tool is going to be within that context of all of your sleep information. So the goal is you wake up in your morning, um, you check your app, you're looking at your readiness score to decide what am I gonna do today? But you're also analyzing your sleep from last night and learning about yourself and saying, wow, what's my natural rhythm and am I living according to it or am I not? So that's where there are going to be some eye-opening discoveries there. I guess this might be another good argument for not changing shifts around, at least dramatically, right? Uh, with the people's hours. Absolutely. If it is possible, and we know it's a luxury for some people and you have flexibility over your schedule, Keeping a consistent bedtime and wake time makes a huge difference. Uh, one of the classic patterns that we see, and don't know if you're in this group, Fred, is that a lot of people kind of yo-yo on a weekday versus a weekend. And so on the, the weekend, you kind of change your behavior. You're like, I'm staying up later. I'm maybe engaging in behavior that I don't normally do, having a couple of drinks, maybe a late night meal out with friends. And what they find is that wow, if that late night weekend rhythm is out of alignment with their body, 
they feel really, really different when they're waking up on those weekend days. But if you find out that you're actually somebody who naturally your body wants to go to bed at 8.30 p.m. or 9 p.m. a little bit earlier, and you stick to that on the weekend, you feel really different, really incredible. And of course, uh, new parents uh, have, have a struggle all their own, don't they? Absolutely. So that's one of the things that um, we really appreciate about this feature is that it's just one part of Oura Ring being an incredible sleep tool for you. So if you are an early bird, great. If you're a night owl, great. That may not be what you're able to live according to. We know new parents, you're not setting your own schedule. There's a little one that is definitely calling the shots. But there may be opportunities within your life to slightly shift more towards your, your natural rhythm and your chronotype. So if you can do that, you're empowered with that information. Are there other new features as well? Yeah, we're doing a lot of work on the contributors themselves. So again, as I mentioned, you have your overarching score and you can think of it like a pie chart. It's from zero to 100 and you're filling up that pie. But within that, there are different elements of the quality of your sleep or your readiness or your activity that make up different parts of that pie. And so we're adding a couple of different elements. The, the first one is within your readiness score, which is kind of your check engine light, go, no go for the day. We're adding a contributor that's called sleep regularity. And so it is changing the way that we look at your readiness long term and saying getting a regular sleep schedule in there again, if you have the ability to do that, uh, really plays a part in how ready your body is for the day. So we're starting to incorporate that into our readiness calculations, um, which changes the math and changes the scores that people are getting, sort of fine tune it based on a lot of feedback that we've heard from people. And then within the other contributors, if you're using the Aura app right now, what you will have seen is that for each contributor, you get sort of a color indicator of how you're doing. So if you're on your sleep tab in the morning and you're looking at your contributors, you'll see blue, 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 orange, like alert, check it out, warning. And while that's a really good quick glance system, we're adding a whole nother level of nuance by adding a fair rating. So a yellow contributor color that's in the middle. So this way we can give even more nuance so that you can look at all of your scores, but know what's really a tech engine light for some of these and what is just, hey, you're headed towards a, 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 you know, a gray area. A really good example of that would be sleep latency is how long it takes for you to fall asleep. And while you don't want to be lying in bed for, you know, an hour trying to fall asleep, you also don't want the opposite. You don't want to fall asleep too quickly. It's a sign of exhaustion. And so adding this additional color allows us to flag like, hey, blue, you're taking just the right amount of time to fall asleep. Red, maybe it's taking, you know, a minute or two, you're that exhausted. Or yellow, like you seem to be staying up for a while in bed. Here are some tips where you might be able to fall asleep a little bit more efficiently. Terrific. So is there evidence to show that this data, the sleep tracking, is can help people, is helping people? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's been a lot of independent research out there. We certainly have a lot of it um, on our blog and on our website itself. We have a whole section with research and validation. I think the most important thing to consider is that people are improving their sleep and using it for very different things. So you'll see some research studies where athletes are figuring out that the greatest gains that they get are actually from prioritizing that rest and recovery and improving their sleep. So some research showing, hey, if you're getting better sleep, it actually means that your performance is better the next day, you're less prone to um, uh, injury or accident, you know, when your muscles aren't fatigued, they're repaired. So there's sort of the athletic angle. And then there are a lot of other people who are looking at how are students performing when you get better sleep and you change sleep schedules. You know, I mentioned, what's your personal circadian rhythm? We're figuring out that Society is definitely optimized for early birds and, you know, the early school start times um, is definitely a conversation that's starting to shift and change. And so we're finding if school starts a little bit later for a lot of people who are not a natural early bird, the quality of the work that they're able to do at school and the learning that they're able to have when they're getting better quality sleep, making a really big difference. So you have sort of the workout angle, the education and societal angle, and then a lot of people 
are looking at the health side. So better sleep has been shown to improve your immunity. Uh, with every lost hour of sleep, your chances of catching a cold go up. Um, also getting better sleep can make you more resilient after getting something like a vaccine. Your body is better able to respond and, you know, mount that antibody response afterwards. So I think what we're starting to see is a lot of people getting better sleep because they have a goal in mind. They want to take better care of their health. They want to be, you know, boosting their memory or, or getting workout gains. And so it's across the board that people are using it. It's interesting. I mean, the, the ring will tell you if you if you are starting to get sick too. Perhaps uh, if you're gonna if if your fever is elevated, your temperature is elevated, it'll tell you that. Or even if it's low, right? Absolutely. A lot yeah. of people use rest mode, um, the feature that you're mentioning, which gets to know your personal temperature and says, "Ooh, Fred, looking like something's challenging your body." And we've heard from a lot of people that that's almost been a beautiful way to get permission for yourself to take the day off and care for yourself. Take that sick day before you actually feel overwhelmingly sick instead of heading to work, you know, signing into work and waiting until the symptoms are just insurmountable at 3 or 4 p.m. and then calling it quits. And it also knows the ring that will tell you or will, will say, hey, did you take a nap at, at uh, 830 last night while you were watching TV? Something it didn't say while you're watching TV, <laughs> but it, it knows it knows if you've dozed off. Oh, absolutely. And hey, some people like to nap in front of the TV or the kind that you turn on a movie and it's lights out. So that's a great segue into the the last feature that we have launching is the Oura Ring's really great at detecting if you're taking a nap. It's really sensitive sleep detection. So if you're falling asleep for 15 minutes or so on the couch, we'll capture that. And in the past, we didn't deliver a sleep score. If it looked like you didn't sleep last night, you just took a nap. And that meant there were a lot of people with really unique sleep schedules, like shift workers, you know, doctors, nurses who might only be getting 45 minutes in an on-call room here or there, or have a strange sleep schedule, who were able to track their naps, but weren't getting the full sleep score in analytics. And so we are rolling that out this week as well, that we're calling it sort of sleep score for all sleep. If you went to sleep, regardless of if it looked like a nap, or it looks like a full night in bed, a more traditional sleep, we're going to give you your sleep score, even if it's very, you know, low at first. So you have all the tools and information to kind of judge accordingly for your day. Well, terrific. And of course, so one of the things we've we've loved best about Aura is the comfort level that it's really easy to wear it when you go to sleep, unlike, you know, some watches and things like that, that uh, may bother you during the night. Yes, definitely. You're not tightening a strap or anything. It's an incredibly small. Um, you know, we joke all the time that we have a channel internally where we're always trying to spot the ring. We call it auras in the wild, where we're trying to be like, is that a regular ring or is that an aura ring? And that's really a testament to how small, how how easy and seamless it is that it often gets mistaken for a regular wedding band. I'll put my uh, hand up to my chin here. So... <laughs> I'm, really I'm, casual. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. For more information, where's the best place for people to go? Yeah, definitely spend time on the website if you're a desktop kind of person, but we have really active social accounts. So if people want to participate in Sleep Week, we're going to have fun um, sort of anecdotes and, and stories about tips for napping, um, percentages of people that are in different sleeping positions. So our Instagram account, our TikTok, our Twitter, they're really active. So if you happen to be scrolling on your phone, hopefully in the process of winding down for bed, you can definitely check out those social channels to learn more. Terrific. And the site is Oura Ring, O-U-R-A ring.com. Carolyn Kreider, thank you for spending time with us. Thanks so much.